Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CSA uh, Cloud Threats and Vulnerabilities Conference. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the Cloud Safe Task Force. And um, it's um, an interesting uh, thing that uh, we've uh, pulled a, um, an important, valuable team together to come up with a whole of nation approach to cloud security. I'm Mari Spina uh, from MITRE. I'm a cybersecurity engineer at MITRE, and I lead uh, the MITRE cloud security capability area. So let's get right into it. So the Cloud Safe Task Force is really a public-private partnership dedicated to uh, creating whole of nation change to improve cloud security, particularly for government use. Um, we've come up with some interesting and potentially game-changing approaches to security. Um, I'm going to give you a number of links at the end for you to get involved if you'd like, and we'll just sort of sum up the activity. Uh, the initiative is meant to be public-private partnership, but include government and industry uh, more in, in particular. And the reason is that we're talking about a whole of nation approach to cloud security, and we really need both parties to buy in, and you'll see why shortly. Um, we established ourselves uh, as a result of uh, quite a number of um, uh, recent attacks on government uh, infrastructure that's hosted in the cloud. And we noticed that government was taking uh, note and uh, there were some letters that went out uh, to various government organizations and we felt that change was coming. And we wanted to be on the front end of that change. We wanted to be the ones providing the input and giving the advice so that government could do this, this thing right. Um, so we pulled together the Cloud Security Alliance, your favorite, um, the Advanced Technology and Research Center, ATARC, uh, the IT Acquisition Advisory Council, and the folks that are, are playing there, of course, John Yeo from CSA, Tom Suter from ATARC, and John Weiler from ITAAC, and myself uh, from MITRE, and I'm accompanied typically on the team with uh, David Pounder uh, and Melanie uh, Wilkes uh, from MITRE. So you may see us if you come and join us. Um, we put together, when we meet, we consider it the Cloud Security Task Force, and uh, we had our inaugural meeting December 4th, and we came up with this roadmap of 10 general high-level recommendations for government. And you'll see that we've broken it down into things we think Congress should do, things we think the president and OMB should work on, uh, things we believe agencies should focus on, and industry as well. In particular, um, we think that legislation should be updated and that it should be related and focused on cloud safe. And this in particular is um, security-based legislation that focuses on cloud security. Uh, we think that a scorecard for industry and for government would be useful. Um, we think that um, improved, more timely, uh, cyber metrics uh, would be valuable. Uh, we want this public-private partnership to continue for enhanced information sharing. Um, typically, you might think of uh, uh, cyber threat intelligence. Think of that. That's a good, good concept. Um, we want to improve continuous monitoring, and we'll talk about some uh, revolutionary ideas in uh, monitoring for, for cloud security in a minute. Um, but we uh, we also believe that uh, things like automation should be used in in monitoring, uh, you know, as well as uh, AI ML. Um, and so let let's just go into and 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 again recognize that you know industry at the bottom plays a significant role, and um, you know we we really do want industry to step up, and and that's why if you look at the founders of the of the initiative, um, they really do bring together all the parties that are necessary. So if you think about what are some of the game changers that we might be talking about, now these are 
possible solutions, right? And so one of the things that the task force is doing is meeting on a regular basis. Uh, we plan to have a meeting every couple of months, um, focusing on one of those topic areas in the in the uh, t- uh, ten step roadmap. And um, so these are the kind of things that we we assume uh, will be dis- discussed. And so let's just talk about some of them, and you'll see why they're kind of game changing. So the notion of in continuous monitoring, our attacker. Uh, really presents us with an asymmetric battlefield. The fact that the adversary is going against our systems all day um, with teams of people uh, and finding our vulnerabilities before we do. We need to combat that and counteract that. And how do we do that? Well, if we could evolve continuous monitoring to actually be continuous testing and, and very much akin to pen testing on a regular routine basis, where the objective is to discover the vulnerabilities um, before the adversary and then, of course, take action on them. The notion of assessment and authorization, uh, the issue there is reducing cost and making it less onerous on both industry and government. Um, and, uh, and, and so that small business and innovation can take effect, right? We don't want costly a a activities that prohibit small business or, or innovation. And so if we can move a a assessment authorization to the left into the DevSecOps pipelines of our cloud service providers, uh, we believe that that could save significant uh, amounts of money and improve the process. We can also add lots of automation when we, uh, when we move to the left, and we'll talk about that a little more. The notion of reciprocity at scale, one thing that we heard from industry uh, in our first meeting and, and some of the research that led to it is that um, they struggled to achieve all of the uh, certifications, security certifications that they need to either operate internationally or to meet certain uh, other criteria and, uh, and, and policies. Um, and then they have to come and get uh a FedRAMP provisional authorization or a DOD uh, provisional authorization, that kind of thing, before they're authorized to do uh, business in, in those sectors. And so this can kind of be a little, little onerous as well, this multiple certification. And so the notion of reciprocity at scale, maybe these industry programs can come closer to the FedRAMP and maybe FedRAMP can come closer to some of the industry certification programs and maybe we can generate a reciprocity uh, framework for that and and reduce the workload for ANA. The other thing is that we know that the government is moving heavily to zero trust architectures and zero trust capabilities. Um, but what and, and we know that the cloud service providers are doing a fantastic job um, really to be commended bringing um, all the capabilities, the zero trust capabilities to bear in cloud service offerings so that that government can actually implement zero trust architectures. So they're doing a great job. But one of the things we'd like to see is the cloud service providers also applying zero trust capabilities on their back end or on their management planes or within their own um, operations. So that's another important thing. We know that AIML is here to stay. Uh, We've all seen uh, the emergence of the large language model and the success that it's having. Uh, We want to see cyber uh, undergo those those same kinds of advances. So we know that AIML has a place uh, in cyber and particularly in the cloud. And then finally, whole of government action is obviously necessary. So let's go let's go uh, into some of these sort of revolutionary things. This notion of continuous um, testing. Why can't we take things like the attack matrix and um, uh, threat scenario or adversary scenario libraries from CITD, the MITRE Center for uh, Threat Informed Defense, um, and actually uh, build emulations and MITRE has a Caldera program that makes it easy and go against our cloud in, in a concerted way. And you'll see MITRE has a number of threat frameworks, Fight, Atlas, and we're working on one with the Cloud Security Alliance now called Caveat. The other thing is um, if we can get to a place of 
um, sort of threat-based assessment where we're talking the same language across the various certification programs, like, for example, the SOC or the STAR, as well as FedRAM. And we're talking in a language that's sort of threat-based. Can that be the common language for reciprocity negotiations? Consider that. The other thing is moving to the left, moving the FedRAMP instrumentation into the DevSecOps uh, environment for cloud service providers, we think can really allow us to automate, automate the production of, of products and artifacts for FedRAMP to uh, uh, prepare their, uh, do their authorization work. Um, and there's a, a large community in uh, governance, um, risk and compliance, GRC, that really has offerings in this area that can help. The other thing is when it comes to ZTA, consider right now that in the ZTA paradigm for government, uh, we're doing a lot to um, control not only the network, but, but the devices that access. And so that's one of the things that we see might be a gap for the, the cloud service provider industry. They really don't care about the devices that are accessing the network and those can pose risk. So that might be an area where cloud service providers can look to incorporate ZTA. The other thing is AIML, I, I really don't want to go into it. And I, I pulled some um, potentially old references just to give you the notion of where we think um, uh, AIML can actually uh, provide support to, um, to, to cybersecurity. And we should be bringing these kinds of tools to bear as, as best we can and as quickly as we can. Um, so the other thing is, we know in the context of incentives, right? Industry does deserve some incentives, incentives. And maybe there's things we can do with award fees, certainly reducing costs for ANA and reciprocity at scale um, can help and, and are an incentive. But we think that the um, we think that the CSPs stand a lot to gain by improving their security um, and their name brand. So um, in the end, CloudSafe initiative, um, we have a number of um, links that you can use and, and go uh, access. I've provided them here on this page. You'll see our early research. We had a survey. Uh, you'll see the report on uh, that I'm showing here as well, uh, the, recommend, the recommended roadmap, and an announcement for our April 8th meeting, which is going to focus on measurement, metrics, and monitoring. So finally, to sum up, um, you know, recognize that we, you know, we pulled this task force together at, uh, sort of to address, uh, I mean, as an answer to what we thought um, were some important attacks that, that had um, impactful results on, um, you know, on government infrastructure. And we don't want the cloud to become something that's unsafe for government. And we really want to make sure that the industry is, is properly armed with the tools that they need and government as well. To, to face the challenge of cybersecurity in the cloud. Uh, so we're meeting on a regular basis. The, the approach and the focus is whole of nation solutions. Um, we're probably gonna come up with some disruptive concepts. I presented a few just now, and I presented those just to give you a seed kernel and get you talking about it. They're not our formal recommendations, uh, but mostly ideas. Um, and it's clear that we need the right, the right folks. We need government and industry to come to the table and address the, the, the technical issues together. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you wanna get involved, the MITRE Policy uh, Data, Center for Data-Driven Policy um, is available. I've provided the email. Please feel free to, to hit that email and, and ask to join. And we're happy to hear your voice and we could use your assistance. And that's really it. Thank you so much for listening.